Another Celtic champion will have his number rise to the rafters Sunday as the team hosts the Cavaliers. And Paul Pierce joins the legends at TD Garden. His number 34 will be retired as Pierce led the Seas back to championship status in 2008 and was named the finals MVP. So for more on the Celts this season, we bring in Aishrod Blakely of NBC Sports Boston. Thank you so much for taking the time. Can you hear us? Yes. Not a problem. Yes. How are you guys doing? There you are. We're good. We're good. But things have changed a little bit in the last 48 hours. So I guess this night is now going to be all about Paul Pierce, huh? <laughs> it, yes, we are. They just finished the uh, the press conference for Paul Pierce, and I am among the many who is basking in the Paul Pierce afterglow. Nice. Uh, this this was a, this was an awesome awesome day, uh, and obviously the big day is tomorrow. But certainly this was a nice kind of hors d'oeuvre of, of which to kind of wet the palate for what's to come. Uh, awesome stories from lots of different people. Mike Gorman, Cedric Maxwell, Antoine Walker had lots of great things to say. Uh, this there, there's. There's nothing that you can knock about this night, uh, which is which is perfect because Paul Pierce, he really, you know, on and off the court, was, was one of the great Celtics. And, and Sherrod, you know this franchise very well. And numbers are numbers, and going to the playoffs is, is great for a franchise. But how big was it for Paul to win a championship with KG and those guys to really make him a Celtic great? Listen here, I, I, I'm of the belief that, that that 34 jersey would not be going up if there wasn't a chip attached to it. Uh, in any other franchise in the NBA, it would not be an issue, championship or no championship. But as you know, things are different in Boston. It is a championship or bust. It is what they equate with greatness. And when you look at the guys that that number 34 jersey is going to be associated with, you're talking about Bill Russell, Bob Cousy, you know, uh, just the list goes on and on. And I remember I was asking Paul about that, and after I got to, like, the fourth name, he just cut me off and said, wow, that's crazy. I'm going to be up there with those guys. But it's not crazy because Paul has earned the right and the distinction to be one of the greats, uh, you know. He's been that valuable to this franchise, no question. Sherrard, it's a great day, great honor for Paul, and obviously much deserved. But we're at a point in time where we're honoring him. Has anybody reflected on his journey uh, to the championship, especially when Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen came to the team, how they were able to mesh and his own maturity throughout the uh, last half of his career? Oh, absolutely. You know, he, he talked a little bit about that tonight. And when you look back at his career pre-title, uh, he went through some things. And he, those are his words. He went through some things. And, we're, you know, there's the ups and downs with, with Patino. There's the, the stabbing. There's the losing. Almost wind up being traded to Dallas. I mean, there were so many things that had they had one or two things gone a different way, we wouldn't be having this conversation about him being one of the all-time great self. And he is appreciative of that. I think he understands how fortunate he was, and then, you know, he's going all the way back to his, his background. I mean, kid from Englewood, grew up in the shadow of the Lakers, loved the Lakers, and you go play for Boston? Come on. Come on. And the fact that, he, you know, they embraced him so much from the very beginning he came to town, and he rewarded them with great play, and obviously in 08, Banner 17. So, as if it's possible to rank greatness among those who have played in green, all those you mentioned, where do you see Paul among those Celtics legends? I would say he is on the short list, and the short list to me is top five. Wow. Uh, I, I, would, I would have a lot of trouble ranking him beyond that. You know, Robert Parrish, he was here, and he said, really, Paul Pierce is the greatest offensive Celtic uh, and he was asked specifically, what about Bird? What about Havlicek? He puts them ahead of those guys as well because for what he can do offensively. And listen, if the Chiefs say he's the greatest scorer, I'm going to go with the Chiefs. <laughs> the Chiefs knows better than I do. So, uh, offensively, he is obviously one of the greats. But I, I think the fact that he has that banner, uh, it puts him in the conversation. But if you don't have multiple titles, I think it's hard to see you as the greatest. I mean, I, I think Bill Russell is the greatest. He's the standard everyone else is measured against. But the fact that Paul Pierce has even played well enough to be in the conversation we've been talking about, the all-time great, it speaks to the career that he had here in Boston. You guys can follow A. Sherrod Blakely under that name on Twitter and on NBC Sports Boston. Before I let you go, um, for sure no tribute videos then during Paul's night. No competing <laughs> tribute videos. That's a nice little, little wrinkle mm -hmm. uh, that we are so thankful for. 
Uh, in so many ways, you have no idea. Uh, so Paul <laughs> gets his night before and after. Uh, so good for him. He, he earned it. He earned things, and, and you know what? And when you think about Paul's career, it's only fitting because things tend to work out for him sometimes without him actually doing anything to make them work out for him. Yeah. So, so all just good. Another, just another all example, good. right? <laughs> Thanks sense. so much for joining us. No problem, guys. Be good. All right. The 34 truth. will rise to the rafters. I like it. But I also, I, I mean, a bit surprised by what he said, that some of the Celtics legends have called him one of, if not the greatest Celtic all time, at least the greatest offensive Celtic. Yeah, I would probably still probably lean towards that because when you, when you look at some of the old videos for the Bob Cousy era, Bob Cousy was dribbling with one hand. Bob Cooley was coming down the court going yeah. like this. And, right. and I was like, is he ever going right. to pick up his left hand? <laughs> <laughs> like, he's just going around in circles. So changed. that's where some of these older cats are saying, hey, that guy in the 60s playing now, yes, there's no question because, to your point, the game has changed so much. So I'm not mad when I hear one of those old guys say offensively. Now, we know Bill Russell defensively is the best hands down, period. Yeah, without question, but. 3D, I'm going I'm to come clean. You'll come clean? I'm come clean. What? Okay, so 1998 draft. Uh-huh. Do you remember the Paul Pierce story? I was a general manager in Vancouver at the time, and we worked Paul Pierce out. He was one of our top. We had the number two pick in the you draft. Pick how? No. Well, nine, nine, Mike nine, Bibby. Nine, oh, because nine, we nine, needed nine, a point nine, guard. Nine, that's right. Okay. And because they thought Paul Pierce was going to go in the first four picks and didn't, Rafe LaFriends followed and Antoine Jameson. He dropped to 10. So I'm coming clean. Paul Pierce basically ruined my career. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Paul Pierce I is taken You should have taken You're yeah. sitting here with I us. I didn't know I was, like, <laughs> passing on a Hall of Famer wow. and one of the all-time great Celtics. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff that. right there. Only sorry, NBA Paul. TV. Only NBA sorry, TV, Paul. Baby. I'm here to apologize to you. I'm wow. sorry. Yeah, That's I mean, it's only on NBA TV yes. because he's here with us exactly. now. And that, again, is because he passed on Paul. But his number 34 <laughs> is I'm going to be rise I'm grateful, to the rafters. There you go. Celtics host the Cavaliers in an Eastern Conference Finals rematch Sunday. That game tips off at 3.30 Eastern on ABC. Of course, your post-game coverage, as always, is right here on NBA TV. We've got one game actually pretty close to the end here. Uh-oh. And it got a lot closer than it was once a 20-plus point lead early in this game. The Pelicans now up 